Apple recently released a public beta for iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 that shows some new and exciting features for the iPad. iPadOS introduces a new home screen, new multitasking options, new Apple Pencil options, support for external drives, and more. In this video, I talk about the new features that excite me the most, the new floating keyboard and quick path swapping features. One of the biggest things that allowed me to move from Android to the iPhone was the introduction of third-party keyboard support on the iPhone. I could finally use Swipe. Swiping is a much faster way for me to type than picking at the on-screen keyboard with my thumbs or fingers. If I wanted to use Swipe, SwiftKey, or Gboard on the iPad, I still had to hold the tablet with one hand and swipe with the other. I looked for a long time for the ability to resize the third-party keyboards that include swiping capabilities, but I couldn't find anything. If such a function existed, I could swipe easily with one thumb without ever having to let go of the tablet. This would significantly reduce fatigue during usage. That brings me to iPad OS 13. In the beta, Apple introduced two things that get me really excited. Swiping and resizing capabilities to their default keyboard. First, let's talk about the floating keyboard. I simply pinch the default keyboard with two fingers and the keyboard will shrink in size. The keyboard then floats on top of the screen you are working on. Although the floating keyboard can potentially block important content, it can be repositioned around the screen by dragging the bottom of the keyboard. For me, I move the keyboard to the middle right of the iPad, a location that lets me hold the iPad more comfortably while still interacting with the keyboard with my right thumb. That brings me to the second new feature that I really like, Quick Path. Quick Path for the keyboard enables swiping on Apple's default keyboard. Finally! As I said before, although many third-party keyboards on the iPad include swiping capabilities, none of them could be resized on the iPad, therefore I had to swipe with one finger over a large keyboard, which isn't very ergonomic to me. Now, Quick Path, which again is what Apple is calling their swiping feature, can be used in conjunction with the floating keyboard. I can now easily swipe on the iPad with just a thumb very ergonomically without ever having to let go of the tablet. Of course, not everything is perfect in the beta. Quick Path doesn't register words as well as Swipe, SwiftKey, or Gboard. Luckily, alternate words show up at the top of the keyboard in the predictive bar, so you can choose any of these words if the software wasn't correct in choosing what you swiped. Another issue I found in the beta was that currently the alternate words do not show up when typing in the browser in the URL bar. This is where I do most of my typing when browsing the internet. So how well does Quick Path functionality work on the beta? Let's find out. I'm going to type the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Let's see the result. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. As a result, quick path needs some work, but again, this is a beta. All this said, you don't have to swipe you can still tap each individual virtual key interchangeably with swiping. This is convenient when you know the word isn't in Apple's dictionary. Currently, I don't think there is an option to add custom words like your last name to the dictionary, but Apple has to start somewhere. So can you currently use third-party keyboards with Float? The answer is yes. After I pinched Apple's default keyboard into the smaller Float keyboard, I tried switching the keyboard to Swipe, and it worked. This is very exciting because there are many functionalities in these third-party keyboards that currently don't exist in Apple's keyboard. For example, pressing and holding certain keys will allow quick access to symbols like the question mark. Also, these third-party keyboards have been around longer, so their algorithms for word detection are a little bit better. Finally, you can add custom words like names or brands to these keyboards. Being able to type something like my last name is a must for me. So in conclusion, iPad OS 13's quick path swiping capabilities on the new floating keyboard bring something new and exciting to the iPad, especially the latest iPad Mini 5. I think the combination of these two new features will decrease fatigue and improve the overall ergonomics of the iPad Mini 5, and I am very excited to see what these features look like when the full version of iPad OS 13 is released in September. Let me know in the comments down below, what is the most ergonomic way that you use your iPad? Are you looking forward to iPadOS 13's floating capabilities and swiping features? And what excites you most about the iPadOS? Click like if you like this video, please subscribe if you want to see more, and check out DansBestTech.com for a full written review.